Hey everybody, so based on my previous poll, today's topic is going to be covering Benny Green's solo on Bella Rosa from his record These Are Soulful Days. This solo reveals some simple and masterful ways to approach soloing over basic chord changes. In this lesson, I'm going to break down some of these concepts and show you how to apply them to your own improvisation. First, let me play you Benny's solo, so that way you can have it in your ear before we start breaking things down. As you can hear, this is such a soulful solo. I would love for my own improvisation to sound this effortless. Okay, well, now let's talk about a couple concepts from his solo. The first one being the simplest is that the blues can and should be played over things other than just the blues form or a dominant chord. Benny's solo, broadly speaking, is a mix of singable melodies, lines, and the blues. For example, listen to this. phrases are taken right out of the C minor blues scale. Notice that all these chords are pretty much out of the key of E flat major. This tells us that as long as we phrase it right, we can play C minor blues lines over pretty much any chord in the key of E flat. One of the keys to doing this is knowing when to play the minor third or when to play the major third. The overall answer to knowing when to do this, of course, is using your ears, but a rule that you can follow to help is that think about the flat third or the minor third as the tension and the major third as the release. So in other words, if you play the minor third or the flat third, just think about it as you need to release the tension, so play the major third after it. Here are some other examples of blues lines from Benny Solo. So the next concept I want to cover is Benny's use of various eighth note techniques. This first technique we're going to cover is called sequencing. Wes Montgomery does this a lot as well. This is when you take a line or phrase and simply move it along with the chord changes. Here's an example from Benny's solo. A good guide to beginning this kind of phrasing is to think about the rule of three. This states that if you repeat something, such as we do when we sequence, you should change it the third time just to make sure it doesn't become monotonous and repetitive. You can see in the example that I played that Benny does follow this rule, as when he gets to the third time where he would have played the line, he actually changes it and starts another sequence.
remember that this rule is just a guide and using your ears is always the best option. Here's another example from his solo using sequencing. The next technique that I want to look at is what um, I'll call focusing on the bigger picture. Oftentimes in soloing, we really focus on making every single little chord change, but when you solo, it doesn't only have to be that way. Benny will oftentimes ignore chord changes to allow him to play the bigger picture chords. Here's an example. In this phrase, Benny plays only a couple chords out of the string of chords from uh, these bars. In the first bar, he's pretty much completely ignoring the D-flat 7 and does an enclosure that leads us into the C7, targeting the B-flat. Then he doesn't really play the G minor 7 and just plays C7 by walking up the diminished scale uh, in this bar. Then finally, he kind of ignores the 2-5-1 at the end and plays a embellished uh, Charlie Parker line that he plays earlier in the solo. This line is pretty much just a diatonic E flat major line. All this to say that if you focus on the big picture, it might simplify your playing. And by big picture, again, I mean the five to one or tension to release of the chord progression you're playing over, or just the basic key center, such as E flat for this example. To get more into this concept, check out my video I did uh, just a little bit ago that really digs into what I'm talking about. Here's an example that uses a bunch of chords that kind of summarizes what we're doing and just focuses on a couple of those chords. The last concept that Benny shows us uh, is really at the core of jazz, and that is call and response. Here's an example. Notice how this phrase is pretty much just a diatonic melody. What makes it great is the question or the call and then the answer or the response. The question phrase ends on the B flat, which is the five chord of our key, which makes it feel like it needs to resolve. Then notice how on the answer, it ends on the root, thus making it feel more final. Here's another example. Now in this example, he's doing the same thing as before, but just using the blues instead of a diatonic uh, scale, such as E flat. Again, he ends the first phrase on the five and the next phrase on the one. I want you to try making your own call and response phrases. Here's one that I made up over this song's progression that you can steal. So in this lesson, we covered multiple topics, including focusing on the blues over things other than just the blues progression, sequencing, focusing on the big picture, and call and response. Make sure and practice these ideas by first memorizing Benny's lines and then writing out different etudes using a combination of Benny's lines and your own ideas and concepts using uh, the concepts that Benny showed us. I'm gonna close this lesson with a etude doing exactly that, mixing uh, the ideas and concepts with Benny's lines as well as some lines of my own. Thank you.
Thank you guys so much for watching this video about Benny Green's awesome lines over Bella Rosa. If you like what I'm doing here on YouTube, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps the channel out. Also, if you want to see more of my playing, I just posted a short playing video on this great standard I'm old fashioned. I'd love for you to listen to it and check it out. Let me know what you think. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching and remember to always keep swinging.